morning. It is good to be with all of you this morning, whether you're here locally, the few uh, that we have here today, and all of you who are joining us streaming online. Uh, I will be announcing uh, the various page numbers and hymn numbers as we go along in today's service. We will be uh, using Divine Service Setting 3 on page 184 in the Lutheran Service Book. We invite you to follow along during all the congregational parts. Um, we, uh, we will also be offering uh, communion after the service to those who want to drive to the church, uh, park their cars, and I will commune each family uh, one at a time. Uh, speaking again the words of institution over unconsecrated elements, um, communing your household, and then getting new elements for each household. I invite you, if you could, it would be helpful for us so that we make sure we don't miss anybody, that you either uh, text me or send a message over Facebook or email uh, to the church that we know uh, to look for you uh, to come. Again, uh, if you're not familiar with the practices of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, we do in faithfulness to our Lord's Word practice closed communion in order uh, that we may uh, continue to commune as those confessing one doctrine and one faith. If you are uh, not a member of uh, one of our sister congregations, uh, we invite you to reach out to us and ask any questions that you may have. I ask that you at least speak with me uh, before, uh, if you desire, to commune. Uh, we will go all the way through the service this morning, uh, all the way through the benediction, uh, and then we will be available afterwards for, uh, for those wishing to come and commune. We want to keep in our prayers this week all who have been affected by the coronavirus. We pray uh, for our leaders locally and nationally, uh, and leaders around the world. We pray for those who are suffering, uh, whether um, in their health or uh, in their jobs, uh, we pray that our Lord would provide for all and bring a swift end uh, to this pestilence. Uh, we invite you to join us uh, throughout the week as we offer various prayer services uh, during this time. With that then, let us begin uh, with our opening hymn, hymn 913. <laughs>
confess our sins as found on page 184. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the intro it found in the bulletin, which has been published both on Facebook and on the church's website. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her, all you who love her. That you may nurse and be satisfied from her consoling breast. I was glad when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord.
Almighty and everlasting God, you despise nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and contrite hearts that lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, we may receive from you full pardon and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, your mercies are new every morning. And though we deserve only punishment, you receive us as your children and provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant that we may heartily acknowledge your merciful goodness, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for the fourth Sunday in Lent, Laetare is taken from the second book of Moses, commonly called Exodus, the 16th chapter. And the whole congregation of the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the people of Israel said to them, Would that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the meat pots and ate bread to the full, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I am about to rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day, that I may test them, whether they will walk in my law or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather daily. So Moses and Aaron said to all the people of Israel, At evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your grumbling against the Lord. For what are we? that you grumble against us. And Moses said, When the Lord gives you in the evening meat to eat, and in the morning bread to the full, because the Lord has heard your grumbling that you grumble against him, what are we? Your grumbling is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. And as soon as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the people of Israel. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quail came up and covered the camp, and in the morning dew lay around the camp. And when the dew had gone up, there was on the face of the wilderness a fine flake-like thing, fine as frost on the ground. When the people of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. 
And Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Gather of it, each one of you, as much as he can eat. You shall each take an omer, according to the number of persons that each of you has in his tent. And the people of Israel did so. They gathered, some more, some less. But when they measured it with an omer, whoever gathered much had nothing left over, and whoever gathered little had no lack. Each of them gathered as much as he could eat. And Moses said to them, Let no one leave any of it over till the morning. But they did not listen to Moses. Some left part of it till the morning, and it bred worms and stank. And Moses was angry with them. Morning by morning they gathered it, each as much as he could eat. But when the sun grew hot, it melted. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing the gradual as found in the worship bulletin. I was glad when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. in St. Paul's letter to the church of Galatia, the fourth chapter. Tell me, you who desire to be under the law, do you not listen to the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by a slave woman and one by a free woman. But the son of the slave was born according to the flesh, while the son of the free woman was born through promise. Now this may be interpreted allegorically. These women are two covenants. One is from Mount Sinai, bearing children for slavery. She is Hagar. Now Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia. She corresponds to the present Jerusalem, for she is in slavery with her children. But the Jerusalem above is free, and she is our mother. For it is written, Rejoice, O barren one who does not bear. Break forth and cry aloud, you who are not in labor. For the children of the desolate one will be more than those of the one who has a husband. Now you, brothers, like Isaac, are children of promise. But just as at that time he who was born according to the flesh persecuted him who was born according to the Spirit, so also it is now. But what does the Scripture say? Cast out the slave woman and her son, for the son of the slave woman shall not inherit with the son of the free woman. So, brothers, we are not children of the slave, but of the free woman. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please stand. We sing the track printed in the worship bulletin. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved but abides forever. As the mountains around Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds His people. From this time forth and forevermore, peace be upon Israel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. After this, 
Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a large crowd was following him, because they saw the signs that he was doing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. Lifting up his eyes then, and seeing that a large crowd was coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread, so that these people may eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they for so many? Jesus said, Have the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down, about five thousand in number. Jesus then took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. And when they had eaten their fill, he told his disciples, Gather up the leftover fragments, that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and filled twelve baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves, left by those who had eaten. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they said, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. Perceiving then that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, Jesus withdrew again to the mountain by himself. This is the Gospel of the Lord. the Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 191 in the Lutheran service book. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. We now sing hymn 743.
the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Praise be to God for the manna of his life-giving word. It is this word alone which sustains us and gives us hope in both body and soul, through this wilderness of sin and death and disease. These times are vivid reminders of our true need, the need for salvation from the chaos and the carnage that sin has unleashed upon the world. Christ invites you to lift up your eyes and away from all that is sick and broken, and find rest in the eternal life that awaits all those whose hope is in Him. The fear and the worry of the world are palpable. Work is slowing down. Restaurants are closing their dining rooms, if not closing altogether. Countless other businesses are being forced to close. People everywhere are being asked not to gather in groups larger than ten, if they gather at all. In two weeks, our own parish has gone from seeing nearly 90 souls gathered together, sitting in this space, to now eight today. Thanks be to God for technology. But for how long? We don't know. The chaos that a virus can cause is quite astounding. We are experiencing a truly global pandemic. What began in a city nearly 8,000 miles away has reached our very doorstep in just a matter of weeks. No nation can avoid being touched by it. Nation after nation is being brought to its knees by something that can't even be seen with the naked eye. O Lord, forgive our foolish pride, which far too often thinks far too much of ourselves and our own strength and wisdom. Have mercy upon us. Yet none of this is new. Indeed, our weakness and our inability to protect and provide for ourselves is no different today than it was two weeks ago. The only difference is that we are, or at least should be, more acutely aware of that fact. Have you worried about your job, your pantry, the stock market? that nagging cough? Do you have loved ones whose age and health or vocation puts them at even greater risk? Is your anxiety through the roof because even the little bit of control that you once thought you had now seems to have slipped right through your fingers? Things of such magnitude have a way of unmasking as frauds the golden calves that we have fashioned for ourselves. Beloved, do not be afraid. You were never in control. But one who loves you is. The same gracious God who knit you together in your mother's womb and knew all your days before even one of them had come to pass. Also created all things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible and microscopic. All things are still under his keeping. God's great power guards every hour, just as completely as they did three months ago, when no one had even heard of COVID-19. 
and this virus will not be allowed to operate beyond his good and gracious will. Do you imagine that the same loving Father who gave his only begotten Son into death to rescue you from eternal judgment will not also provide for you right now? You know, because he has told you, he will care for you. Just as he provided for the Israelites in their time of need in the wilderness, he will meet your needs. Now, of course, the devil will try to convince all of us otherwise. He loves to see us running around panicking as though God has lost all control or never really had it in the first place. He loves to see us forgetting the one thing that is truly needful, God's word and promises, because our hearts are too overwhelmed with the sudden cares of the world. Repent. Your heavenly Father took care of you yesterday. He will take care of you today. And tomorrow? Don't worry about tomorrow. He's got that covered as well. Today has enough for you to think about and tend to. Hear the word of God. Pray. Tend faithfully to your vocations. Love your neighbor. Does that mean that you won't be infected or possibly even die from this disease? No. No more than is the case with any other disease or manner of death that afflicts mankind. And that is constantly, every day, swirling around us. Unless you are one of those blessed to be alive when our Lord returns, your physical body will die. That fact hasn't changed. You still live in this world that is infected to every last cell with the plague of sin. This virus is just another manifestation and reminder of that. There's nothing, nothing new under the sun. Dear Lord, wake us from our slumber and teach us to rightly number our days. But the same Jesus who lifted up his eyes to behold the needs of the crowds and provided for them, sees every last one of your needs today, and will no less provide for them. However, if the best that your Lord does for you is keeps you from getting sick, he's really done nothing. He hasn't helped you for very long. You would still die in your sin one day. And what will your health or your wealth mean then? Nothing. All temporal things suffer the ravages of sin. Dear Christian, rejoice. You don't need to fear death. The Lord Jesus has seen this need too and provided for it in abundance. That is why he took on your flesh. He has overcome not simply all the various symptoms, but the disease that lies at the heart of all of them. Your sin in his own holy, perfect, sinless flesh God's Son has willingly submitted Himself to God's righteous wrath and judgment. He knows what lies at the heart of all your fear and unrest, even if you don't always recognize it. He lifted up His eyes and beheld His creation decimated by sin, 
cast under the shadow of death. He saw you dying the slow, eternal death of your rebellion against God and has provided what none of us are capable of providing. He gave us, He gave all mankind hope. Christ Jesus has rescued us from death by suffering that very death Himself. He certainly didn't quarantine himself away from sinners so that he wouldn't be infected. Just the opposite. He was saturated with our death. All of it. He who knew no sin became sin for us. The Lord of life allowed himself to be swallowed by death in order that he might be, that he might overcome it, burst forth from the grave and ascend to the right hand of the Father. No longer must death hang over you like a cloud of impending doom. You don't need to fear either the death of your body or your soul, because both have been wholly redeemed by Christ. Your sins are forgiven. The guilt of your iniquity has been removed. Death has no rightful claim on you because in the waters of holy baptism you were clothed in the righteousness of Christ and you were born a child of God. In those waters, God bestowed His life upon you. He gave you His eternal Spirit, and now He bestows upon you the medicine of immortality, His own resurrected flesh and blood in the Holy Communion. These destroy death. They forgive sin. Holy Communion is a real and true Participation in the life, the eternal, unbreakable life of Christ. And in receiving these things, according to your Savior's own promises, you may be assured of the resurrection and redemption of your body and life everlasting in God's kingdom. Dear children of God, wherever it is you happen to be sitting today, do not let these days drive you into fear. Do not imagine that your good Lord doesn't see your need in the midst of this pandemic. He saw it before you knew about it and has already prepared your daily bread. His good and gracious will for you will be done, not only in spite of this virus, but actually through it. And even though we cannot gather now, as we long to go into the house of the Lord, still, His Word will come to us. And on that day, when we are here gathered together again, that will be a day of great rejoicing. Until then, may our Lord use these days of isolation and rationing to bring all of us to hunger for the one thing needful, the thing that gives eternal life, the life-giving word of our Lord and Savior. Now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Jesus Christ our Lord. In the name of Jesus. We stand for the offertory found on page 192 in your hymn.
Please stand. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. Almighty and eternal God, worthy to be held in reverence by all people everywhere, we give you humble and sincere thanks for the innumerable blessings that you have bestowed upon us, without any merit or worthiness on our part. We praise you especially for preserving for us your saving word and the holy sacraments. Grant and preserve to your holy church throughout the world purity of doctrine, and provide faithful pastors to preach your word with power. Protect those who preach and give spiritual care. Give courage to fathers and all who teach and pray in every household. Help all who hear the word rightly to understand and truly to believe it. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, in mercy, bring to repentance the enemies of your church and grant them amendment of life. Protect and defend your church in all tribulation and danger and sustain with your spirit our brothers and sisters in Christ around the world who cannot gather together. Strengthen us and all fellow Christians to set our hope fully on the grace revealed in Christ and help us to fight the good fight of faith that in the end we may receive the salvation of our souls. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Loving God, bestow your grace on all nations of the earth. Bless especially our country, its inhabitants, and all who are in authority. Give us wisdom, charity, and courage in chaotic times. Let your glory dwell in our land, that mercy and truth, righteousness and peace may abound in all places. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We thank you, most merciful Lord, for bestowing the gift of new life to the calendar, star, and slave family. Bless and preserve these mothers and their children, and bring them safely to the day of birth. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Compassionate Lord, graciously defend us from all calamity by pestilence, scarcity, famine, and every other evil. Spare us from disease and its fear. Bring us to a daily remembrance of our dependence upon you for every good and necessary gift. Send your Holy Spirit to remove all fear and anxiety from our hearts, that we might live and find fresh joy and strength in your promises. Protect and prosper all who labor in their rightful callings, especially those who remain in harm's way for the good of their neighbors. Be the God and Father of the poor, the unemployed and the homeless, the helper of the hungry and needy, the comforter of the distressed and those who sorrow. Watch over and keep our missionaries throughout the world, especially Pastor Wildauer and his family, as they seek to spread the light of the gospel in these dark times. Look with mercy especially upon Edith, Tracy, Shad, Robert, Carly, Beverly, Harlene, and J.E. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Accept, we implore you, O Lord, our bodies and souls, our hearts and minds, our talents and powers, together with the offerings we bring before you as our humble service. Fill us, your children, with hearts moved toward generosity, and keep your ministry and your church always before us, so that we may have compassion to help all in need as we are able. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Grant your Holy Spirit, O Lord, to those who come to the Lord's table this day, that they may receive the heavenly manna of Christ's very body and blood in sincere repentance and firm faith and to their abundant blessing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, 
as we are strangers and pilgrims on earth. Help us by true faith and a godly life to prepare for the world to come, doing the work you have given us to do while it is day, before the night comes when no one can work. And when our last hour comes, support us by your power and receive us into your heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. In the same way also, he 
took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. for you, the body of Christ for you, the body of Christ for you. 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 Body of Christ for you. Take drink the blood 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 of Christ for you. The blood of Christ for you. for you. The blood of Christ for you. And 
Now may the holy body and the precious blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Closing hymn, hymn 404. 